I want that kid. Forget it. I'm not going to start chasing pigeons around. I'll take the reins in this one, McCall. Ruffy's the only one who knows how to run the birds. Boys! All right, where is she? This girl has been kidnapped due to your negligence. They got Ruffy. They didn't mean cats. Looks like our little bird flew the coop. Looks like you found me. Hello, oh, pal. Don't you know that a gentleman always lets his lady win? I figure a win is a win, Ruffy, no matter how you come by it. That's not why I always take your socks and gin rub you. <laughs> come on, we gotta feed the birds. <laughs> Look at them. No matter how much you feed them, they always act like they're starving to death. Well, maybe they're just tired of being cooped up, Pete. Maybe I ought to let them out for a while. Oh, sure. And so they'll all fly back to their old roost in Agura, huh? Why don't you train them to fly here like Yank? I'm gonna do that, Ruffy, pretty soon. Pretty soon. Uh, Ruffy, uh, look, honey, why don't you uh, go down on the market and get us a couple of big, thick, juicy steaks for dinner, huh? Steaks? Yeah. Sure. 
Did you hit an exact or something, Pete? Yeah, I hit an exact. <laughs> hey, go take Gek with you. Come on. Take care of him now, okay? Okay. Right. Here you go. Look, I'd appreciate it if you were out of here by the time the kid shows up. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking what a shame it is you went to all this trouble to train these smart little birds to fly in our merchandise for us, and now you want to retire them. I'm done. Through, we're even. For how long? Till your next year thing breaks down in a stretch? Look, you know so much about running birds. Do it yourself. You know what I think, fellas? I think old Petey boy here is looking for a bigger piece of the action. Yeah, I think so. The last thing I want to hear is some horse playing rummy getting greedy. So from now on, you're going to do what I say, and you're going to do it for free. You can't do a thing without the birds. If I say no, it's no. You don't even know where they land. Grab them, grab them. He was trying to let the birds go. You saw it. Grab those damn cages, load the birds up, and let's get the hell out of here. But we don't know how to run them. I think I know someone that's going to help us. Do me a favor, would you, Nicole? If you want to do my nails over, I'll type your report. You're a police officer. You shouldn't have nails. I work homicide. You want to talk to somebody in burglary? You are Sergeant Rick Hunter, aren't you? I was this morning. Your cousin, Jilly, my bookmaker, he said that you were the best cop on the force and that I should talk to you. Jilly's your bookmaker, too? Actually, he used to handle some of my Uncle Pete's action, and I used to help him make his picks. But Uncle Pete fell off the roof and was killed, and somebody swiped the rest of his pigeons. And I want to file a complaint so that you could help find them. Pigeons, huh? Okay, who put her up to this? Delgado? <laughs> Look, honey, I'd like to help you out, but I'm real busy right now. They stole the rest of his pigeons, and nobody wants to help me. Nice going, Hunter. Mm. Your Uncle Pete gambled a lot? I guess. 
Benny called him a degenerate. I think that means he gambled with you. Who's Benny? A friend. So Uncle Jilly's taking bets on pigeon races, huh? Uncle Pete never bet on pigeons. He bet on horses and football and basketball. Lucky for them, those birds can live on chicken feed, considering the odds Jilly pays. Hunter. Look, honey, I know how important these birds are to you, and we'd like to help you out and all, but I gotta be honest with you. As far as the police department's concerned and the law, this is a very petty crime. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not gonna help me find out who took him and get him back. The captain wouldn't authorize it, sweetheart. The birds aren't worth enough to justify the time of two police officers. Those pigeons are worth from $100 to $300 a piece. And Yank, I could get $700 for him as a breeder. How many birds did you say there were again? McCall. About 30, not counting Yank. Well, I think we could go by the loft on our way home. Come on. Hunter. Forget it. I'm not gonna start chasing pigeons around. I want you to go on up. I'll check in. This is L56 McCall. I need some information on somebody. Patch me into records, please. L56, stand by. Ruffy, isn't it possible that somebody left the cage doors open and the birds flew away? Somebody took them. The Karen cages are gone, and anyway, if somebody did let them go, only Yank would come back. Because, you see, Yank was retrained to this coop, and if something happened to this coop, Yank would fly back to his old home. And the other birds wouldn't fly back here? Not yet. They hadn't been here long enough to find out that this is their real home. Uncle Pete just got them. Ruffy. You said your Uncle Pete gambled a lot. Was he in hock to the bookies? For a long time, but he got healthy again just before his accident. He'd been living on beans for a month, and then all of a sudden he sends me out to buy some steaks. He must have hit a big one. Hunter? I ran a check on the girl's uncle, Pete Collier. The autopsy reports show that he died of a broken neck, probably the result of the fall. He had an open pint of bourbon in his pocket, but the blood test showed under 0.01. So he wasn't drunk. So we've got a degenerate gambler who, according to Ruffy, was tapped out. And he happens to own $9,000 worth of racing pigeons. Can they help me find my pigeons for me? Well, I think it's time we take you home now, Ruffy. Well, we can't run a police investigation with you tagging along, you know. Investigation? Come on, those birds are probably... Those birds are probably somewhere by now. Come on, let's go. Do we get to ride in the police car again? Can we run the siren this time? We'll be lucky if the lousy car starts this time. That's it! Walk me to the door. I'm 10, you know. And besides, I don't want to worry my parents coming home in a police car now. Bye. They'll hardly recognize this as a police car. You think we're saps for running this down? Homicide detective, not Dr. Doolittle. Well, we may have a homicide. It's obvious what could have happened. One of Pete's gambling debts caught up with him, and they grabbed his only assets. Ruffy said those birds were worth over $9,000. Yeah, well, I wouldn't believe everything she says. Because she's not going home. Terryton Road, and you don't have to drop the meter if you don't want to. 
Yes, ma'am. with that kid? Good question. No good question. What do you mean you don't know where she is? What kind of answer is that? We gotta make that run or they're gonna fold up shop on the other side of the border. Then we'll be out the money and the shipment. Which one of you two guys wants to explain that to our creditors? You don't understand. These two are cops. You don't understand. What, the two of you, you just float out of the sky? Huh? What, do you think they're gonna slap our wrist for this? We're gonna all wind up as mincemeat in some local butcher shop. Now, you two hit every place where that kid might be and then some. I want that kid. She's the only one that knows how to run those birds and where they're gonna fly into. And those two gunslingers we ran into, we just forget about them? That ain't so easy. Listen, man, I've heard about Hunter. I don't care what you heard. You two guys find that kid! This is what she said, 6042 Tiverton. What do we owe you? Always willing to help the law. Besides, the kid took care of it. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah. OK, Wiggs, 10 across on Rubberneck in the third. Can I help you? Yeah, is your name Benny? Yeah, uh, what do you want? We're looking for a little girl named Ruffy Collier. So, uh, am I supposed to? <laughs> OK, sport, I'm looking for that girl, and I better find her in primo condition real quick. Otherwise, I'm going to be sorry all over you. No! Ruffy, no! no! Please don't hurt him. Leave him alone. Ruffy. Are you all right? All right? Yeah, I'm all right, sweetheart. It's all right, baby. It's all right, baby. All right, sweetheart. After her parents died, it was foster homes and juvenile hall, the usual bit. Then Pete found her. Nobody from the social welfare never came looking for you? Sure they did, but Pete took care of them. Pete was a warm, decent, wonderful human being, a sweetheart. But he was a degenerate gambler. Who did Pete owe, do you know? Every book in town. About three months ago, he told me he was stuck over 30000 He was in that deep and they still carried him? Nah, they sold off his mark as a quarter of a dollar. So would you believe this? Jake Henderson. Jake Henderson? He breaks kneecaps for a living. Since when has he been buying up markers? He bought up Pete's. And a funny thing happened. The two of them wound up partners in a scheme that Pete said would get him even. Like what? He didn't say, and me. I don't ask such questions. But it was plain that Pete didn't like it. They're going to put Ruffy in another foster home, aren't they? What else? If you want her, you could file an application with the Child Welfare Department. I give my right arm. But what happens when they investigate and find out what I did for a living? Ruffy, it's time to go, sweetheart. I want to stay with my Uncle Benny. You will, sweetheart. We'll work it out somehow. You, you'll let me know where she is and what's happening, please. Sure, Benny. I'm going to turn on my answering machine, then I'll turn volume up, and that way, if I call, you hear my voice, you'll be able to pick up the phone and talk to me, okay? Are you tired? Ready for a nap? I bet I have a lot of new stuff to dream about after what's happened today. I bet you do, too. Okay, come on. Shut up. Here. Let's take a nap with you. Sleep tight, kid.
probably should turn her over to the child welfare people. Been to juvenile hall lately? Yeah. All right, what do you say we go see what uh, Jake Henderson was doing with Pete Collier, huh? Good idea. Maybe one of us better cover the back door in case Jake tries to boogie out of here. OK. It's your idea, your job. I'll go in. Now, wait a minute. It's a pretty rough place in there. <laughs> OK, we'll flip a coin. All right, we'll use my coin. Heads. Heads. You cheat. Next time, we'll use your coin, the one with two tails. Now, come on, let's go. Besides, you look like a cop. They'll never make me. I don't think you're going to get very far without this, Jake. Jake, you want to tell me why you bought up all of Pete Collier's I, markers? Uh, Pete Collier, I never heard of him. Ah! How's your hearing now, Jake? Uh, so I picked up a few of his markers, so what? I figured Pete Collier was due for a change of luck, and at 25 cents on the dollar, how much can I lose, right? Yeah, well, his luck it ran out altogether. It happens. You didn't get hurt, though, did you? The way I figured, you're just about even. You spent 7,500 buying up those markers, but you must have pulled in at least that much when you unloaded Pete's birds. What birds? Oh, oh, you mean the pigeons? I heard they flew away. Yeah, well, if you happen to see them flying overhead, you'll be sure to let us know, won't you, Jake? Yeah. Get out of here. I think it's going to go tell on you, Hunter. Yeah, it'd be real nice to know to who. Yeah. Come on. how we used to do it when we were busting bookies and vice. Here we go. Five, 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 seven, seven, two, one. Deacon, Jake, hey, what the hell did you get me into? What are you talking about? I just got shoved around by a hard-nosed cop named a hunter. Now, I ain't standing still for this. Deacon, I'm telling you. Cool it, Jake, just cool it. Did he bust you? No, but, uh... Then what are you worried about? He's just blowing smoke. If he flashes his badge again, call me. You didn't tell him nothing, did you? Of course not. Hey, there's no connection to you at all. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Okay, that's neighbors feeding grain off San Fernando Road, right? That's a Roger L-56. Thanks, Lucille. L-56 out. Oh, whoa, whoa, no, 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 whoa. You are not getting into my car with that. It doesn't go with the upholstery. You're so picky. You know, this sauce is going to eat right through my paint. Why do you have all of that? I bought a couple extra chili dogs for Ruffy. She doesn't have it tough enough being a homeless orphan? All right, look, I ran that number down that Jake called. Are you ready for this? It belongs to a neighbor's feeding grain out in the Northwest Valley. It's owned and operated by a guy named Carl Deacon. You know what else? There was a sack of pigeon feed in Pete's loft with their name on it. OK, well, why don't you finish your whatever, and we'll go check it out. L-56, stand by for a patch call from your precinct captain. Stand by, please. Hey, where are you? Uh, Captain, this is McCall. Hunter is uh, out of the car right now. Can I help? Yeah, I got a real upset lady from Child Welfare on my phone wanting to know what you two have done with one of their charges. I suggest you explain it to her. Hold on while I patch her call into you. Great. OK, now what do I tell her? I tell them you can't hear her because your radio doesn't work. Hunter, this is my car, not yours. In my car, everything works. Except the radio. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'll take the reins in this one, McCall. You don't even want this case. Remember you said, I'm not gonna go chase after a bunch of birds. You remember that? This case is obviously bigger than a bunch of missing birds. Oh. I think we should do it my way, McCall. Otherwise, somebody's gonna find out you've been harboring a child that should be in the custody of the Child Welfare Department. You went along with it. You were an accomplice. But she's in your apartment. Would you like to come in and watch? Come in. Carl Deacon? Yeah. What do you want? Yeah, a mutual friend sent me over to see you. Jake Henderson? On uh, what? Well, he said you'd make me a heck of a deal on some pigeons. I don't sell pigeons. Only feed, a few quail, and some loft equipment. That's all. Oh, come on. I was standing right there when he made the phone call. You're a cop, right? He made you, too. What do you think tipped it off? Was it something you said or did, or maybe it was just instinct? Oh, I think it was instinct. Like me, I've got it, too. Only on the other side of the fence. Like right now, I think you're lying to me about those birds and that maybe they're right here. I don't have to dance around with you, cop, so get lost. We'd really like to see those birds, Deacon. They belong to a little girl. Now, you don't mind if we look around, do you? If you got a warrant, you can look till your eyes pop out. If not, there's a door. You want a paper? I'll get the judge to issue me a paper. But I got to be honest with you, Deacon. The next time I leave here, this place isn't going to be this neat. And if you lie to me about what you had to do with Pete Collier's dying from bad credit and a broken neck, you're going to need some rearranging, too. What'd you tell Miguel? Well, tell him we're gonna be down there tomorrow, like we said. And he better have the stuff ready. Yeah, yeah, I'll still a bye-bye to you, too. How are we gonna do that? Do what? Go down there tomorrow. We're gonna fly down there in the airplane. How else? You know what I'm saying. Without the kid? I mean, she's dropped into a black hole. She shouldn't be that hard to find. Where the hell could that kid be? At a friend of Pete's, right? And how many friends can a deadbeat like Pete have? Uh... I don't know, Deacon. Uh, another country heard from. What's your problem? Look, she's just a little girl. You're kidding. I thought she was your grandmother. Let me tell you guys something. The people that put up the money for this run want that dope. And if we don't deliver it, we're all going to wind up in a cemetery. Any other problems? OK, let's go. <laughs> Captain's been looking all over for you two. Been running down those missing pigeons, have we been? Captain, huh? <laughs> Uh-oh. Vogue is at 12 o'clock. Hunter, McCall. This is Miss Rankin. These are the two officers you want to talk to. Miss Rankin is with the Child Welfare Department. I'm looking for Teresa Collier. Have you tried missing persons? Uh-uh. You two are not going to smoke this one past me. Now, everybody saw you leave here this morning with the girl. Oh, Ruffy. They mean Ruffy. Why didn't you say so? I have a court order to pick up that child. Do you have a foster home ready for her? My job is to pick up Teresa Collier and take her into custody. The girl is a truant and a runaway. Oh, that's a laugh. She's got nothing to run away from or to. A kid that age, a foster home could take weeks, maybe months. Captain, I demand that you order these two to tell me where I can find that girl. I'm sorry, but an attempt has been made to kidnap that girl. She's also a possible witness in a crime. So she's been placed under police protection until this investigation is complete. Unless you want to be responsible for what happens when the men looking for her find her. Yeah. I didn't know anything about this. But I think under the circumstances, the girl should remain under police protection. Well, I at least have to see her first. I have to report back the conditions in which she's being held and who will be the supervising guardian. Ruffy? Ruffy? Teresa? Teresa, it's Miss Rankin from Child Welfare. Teresa? Oh, 
all right. Where is she? Sergeant, if this girl has been kidnapped due to your negligence... Well, she wasn't grabbed, and she took Yank with her. Looks like our little bird flew the coop. Why? I've been trying to raise you and your partner all day. I still got that lady from the child welfare department, and we know you have that girl. Now call me or get your butt in here. Hey, Dee Dee, I just wanted to give you a call and let you know that last night was... <clears throat> well, uh, anyway, at least we know she's all right. Yeah, but for how long? If she's in danger, the last place she needs to be is on the streets. A little girl with a birdcage shouldn't be too hard to find, now should she? Benny's. Benny's. They got Ruffy. Who? I don't know. They got it. How many of them were there? There were two. A big one and a bigger one. <clears throat> easy, easy, easy. Come on. Come on. OK. This is Sergeant McCall requesting an ambulance at 6042 Tiverton. <laughs> right. Ambulance is on its way. Go find her. Come on. Get her back, please. I'll be OK. You sure? I'll be OK. Relax, McCall. Ain't nothing here but us chickens. I'd have sworn they'd brought Ruffy here. They probably did. And where'd they take her? Probably the same place they took those other pigeons that were in the coop. And what do you suppose this is? It was like a life vest for pigeons. You see, they put them on the birds when they have to fly over the water. You know, this does look like something that would fit on a pigeon. There's little pockets here. This is heroin. It's Mexican brown. Hunter, that's what they're doing. They're using pigeons to transport heroin. I guess that would work. With Pete dead, Ruffy's the only one who knows how to run the birds. I'll bet you they're on the way to Mexico right now. Look, I'll get in touch with immigration. They can contact the border patrols of both Tijuana and Tecate. They won't have enough time to drive to Mexico and back. Hello? Yeah, Chuck? Yeah, what can I do for you? Yeah, I'm calling about Mr. Deacon's airplane. Uh, what's the matter with you people? How many times I gotta tell you? It's all gassed and the pigeons are on board. It is? Great. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Just check it. Van Nuys Airport, quick. I could show you how to start the pigeons, but I don't know where Uncle Pete trained them to land. You see, sweetie, either you remember where Pete's place was in Agora, or we're gonna drop you out of the plane along with the pigeons. Only you don't get no parachute. Wait, wait a minute. Uncle Pete gave me a picture of himself in front of his old place in Agora. Hey, look at that, will ya? Now you don't need me anymore. You can let me go. Hit him, man. Cops!
That's the whole load. This is the last pigeon. I'm telling you, I know this country. There's a shopping center a couple miles this side of that hill. And a new housing development going up five or so miles the other side. All I hope is you can find the place. It should be easy enough to spot from the air. That is, if the kid's telling us the truth. Ah, uh, she's too scared to lie. If I didn't have the cash in my own hands, I wouldn't believe that anybody in his right mind would be doing business with you guys. You hang a million bucks worth of dope on a flock of pigeons? <laughs> que estupidos. You don't even know where they're gonna land. Let us worry about it, okay? You'll see us in a couple of days after we turn this deal. Maybe you'll turn this load over, and maybe I'll hear from you. Amigo, I got other customers who are more of a sure thing. Adios. Let me tell you something, Cucaracha. You want to trade bad attitudes? I got one with your name on it. All you got to do is show when and where I tell you to, or my pigeon-toting friends and I are going to come back down here and stomp on some sombreros. Comprende, amigo? Hey, I got all the dope you can buy, amigo. Now, if that stuff don't reach the people who are bankrolling you, it ain't my neck. Vamonos. Let's finish up here and get out. Now, what the hell is this thing? It's a vest they put on pigeons so they can carry things. You see, it's got these two little pockets in there. We got it in the warehouse where they were keeping the pigeons. Pigeons with their own little vests. It's cute, Hunter. But what's all this got to do with whether or not the girl was kidnapped? We think the people using these birds are smuggling narcotics up from Mexico. And they kidnapped the girl because she's the only one that could manage the birds. Using pigeons to smuggle narcotics? If you're putting me on, Hunter... Really, if you are putting him on, Hunter... The police chemist ran a check on this vest. The preliminary report shows traces of pure, uncut Mexican brown. How many birds did you say there were involved? There's 30, give or take. Each bird can carry two ounces. Two ounces? Big deal. 30 pigeons. Each carrying two ounces of pure heroin. 28 grams to the ounce, cut it seven times, and sell it on the street for $100 a gram, and we come up with... $1,176. Exactly. That would look pretty good on my on our uh, precinct report. Drug bust that size? Well, we might have a problem with that. You see, this is the only bird we've got, and he was trained to land in the city. Now, according to Ruffy, the other birds are trained to land in a, an entirely different location. We think that's out at a coop in Ogura. Well, what are you waiting for? Go out and pick him up. We can't. Only Pete Collier and Ruffy knew the whereabouts of that coop. He's dead and she's been kidnapped. Obviously because she can take Deacon right to the coop. Well, after we run a house to house through Agura, Deacon and the dope will be long gone and the kid will be stuffed in a well somewhere. You could have talked all day without reminding us, Bernie. Just being realistic, McCall. There goes our big bust. You know, Captain, I think Yank can help us. If he was half parrot and could talk. Captain, according to Ruffy, he was originally trained to the Agora coop. Now, if we could make him go back there, we can hang a radio direction finder on him. If! If your aunt had wheels, she'd be a wagon. Now, look, Pete trained this bird to land in the city coop. Pigeons are like cats. They never forget where they live. And if the current loft isn't acceptable, they'll always return to their former roosting place. How are you gonna get him to move out, Hunter? Move in a noisy neighbor next door to him? Oh, that's very cute, Bernie. But I've got something else in mind. <laughs> Turn him loose, Mr.
barn right there. go around the back and create a diversion. Transmitter. Hunter, you all right? I think I sprained my back. That was a dumb stunt. You could have gotten killed. Well, it worked for her. You guys will come see me, won't you? We sure will. You betcha, Ruffy. Just as soon as you get into your new foster home. And you'll be sure to tell them where, huh, Miss Rankin? Of course. Time to go. Give me a hug. You take care, huh? You too. Fine. Bye. Be good. Bye. So long, Ruffy. You too, big guy. Ow! <sighs> there ought to be a law. Good riddance. Kids and animals don't belong in a police station anyway. Bernie, you better get a shot for that right away, otherwise you might come down with spikenosis of the mucket. You must really think I'm stupid, don't you, Hunter? Well, when you've got me, you've got me, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Hunter, you ever think about having kids? No. Me either. Thank you. 